I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, so here we have a Western Digital external hard drive from 2006. So this is actually a 500 gigabyte hard drive. And this thing will get to show you what a 500 gigabyte hard drive from 2006 looks like. So for example, um, back in 2006, uh, 500 gigabytes was probably the equivalent of well, let's say five terabytes today. Um, decent quality computers from that year. I mean, we're talking we we're talking about when Windows XP was still the main OS, um, just before Vista came out. Uh, it was typical to see, um, I would say, mid-range to somewhat premium machines having, let's say. 160 to like 250, maybe 320 gigabyte hard drives. Um, you go into 2007, 2008, then we start seeing like 640, 750, maybe one terabyte. Um, so, on the back of this, we have, of course, our power input. We have a USB 2.0 input as well as two FireWire jacks because I believe the way it worked with FireWire is you'd actually daisy chain these drives. If you're using FireWire, if you had multiple external hard drives, you would do it that way. Um, so we're pretty much going to actually be shucking a drive here. So on the front, you have a little little button. It's probably like a power button, I guess. I don't know. Um, now, I got a couple of newer Western Digital My Books that will automatically power down when you disconnect the USB cable so could be different with FireWire, I don't know but uh this little circuit board here has of course the uh this little button as well as some LEDs the whole bunch of LEDs probably d dual pattern and inside we have this Western Digital um, WD5000KS um, Caviar SE16 hard drive manufactured on October 22nd, 2006. And it uses the serial ATA interface or SATA interface. And this drive is quite heavy. I mean, it is definitely heavy. Uh, let's go ahead and get this out of here so that way we can get a better look at it. Okay, so we got this thing out where we can see the back of it better, and one thing interesting to note about this hard drive is it's from the early era of SATA hard drives. These earlier SATA hard drives featured the typical SATA power connection we all know now, um, but they also featured the legacy 4-pin Molex connection that was typical for IDE hard drives. That way, um, you could install this in an application um, without having to use a power supply that had a SATA connection, power connection, um, or have or having to use an adapter. I'll say that thing is definitely in there. There it comes. Alrighty, so there's the hard drive. Um, let me continue. I'm taking this apart and I'll show you the final product.
Okay. There's you look at the bottom of the hard drive. And I'm going to say this thing has to have, I'm going to say three platters. Now, put in perspective, a modern hard drive of that size would typically have just one platter. Um, for example, I think I have some Seagate hard drives back here that have just one platter. And they're 500 gigabyte drives. If I could find one, I just literally had installed one in a computer not long ago. So I may not have any more. But it's typical to have, um, for, five, for 500 gigabyte drives, even one terabyte drives nowadays, maybe even two terabyte drives, to have just a single platter. So it comes to show just how far we've come over the years. So this hard drive, I would say, was very premium in 2006. Now, considering it, it came out of an external enclosure, you'll probably think, ah, it's uh, probably a slow end. Uh, 5400, 5400 RPM drive, but no, it's actually a 7200 RPM drive, and it's got 16 megabytes of cache. Um, yeah, so, and it's a uh, SATA 3 gigabit per second drive, so it's not the oldest SATA standard. It's actually a SATA um, 2.0 or SATA 3 gigabit per second standard. Now, the drive itself, you generally wouldn't have anywhere near those kinds of speeds, but I mean, for 2006, I'd say this is pretty, pretty dang nice. Um, now I got my first SATA hard drive back in um, the end of 2006. It was a Western Digital Caviar SC uh, 160 gig hard drive, so much smaller than this. And this thing is definitely a tank. I'm not sure if it works or not. I have to, I have to give it a try here and here in just a bit. I, 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 like I mentioned, this thing, <laughs> it weighs, it, it feels like a brick. Okay, so I pulled out the Internet Explorer PC, and I've set this hard drive in there, and got it plugged up to a SATA data connection, and I'm using the 4-pin Lux connection because this power supply does not have any SATA connections on it for power. So this is a, a Socket 939 dual-core system. Um, I'd say it's somewhat from the era of this hard drive. I mean, the hard drive is actually a little bit newer, I would say. I believe, of course, by 2006, we already had a socket AM2, I'm pretty sure. Um, 939, definitely. But, um, so I'm going to start this up, and let's have a listen to this hard drive ramp up. Now, under here we have a Hitachi 80GB, which should spin up faster than this one. So let's go ahead and... Start this thing up. Oh, it sounds like it might be bad. It just, it actually just cycled off. Okay, so it's given up. This hard drive is actually bad. Um, either the external hard drive, maybe it's gotten dropped at some point. Um, or the hard drive has just failed. You could hear the clicks of death. Um, luckily, I don't have any need for any data off that drive. It was actually uh, one I found somewhere. I think it was probably, I think it was one that was trashed into an e-waste bin or something. I can't remember for sure. But um, that would explain, I mean, yeah. <laughs> hard drive's bad. So, I guess that means we get to open it up, but that's going to be in a part two. So, the IEPC has just said to heck with you. I'm going to go ahead and start up without you. But, um, yeah. So, it looks like we have a bad hard drive. That's unfortunate. I was hoping to be able to do some testing with it to see, like, how fast the uh, throughput is on and stuff like that. But, oh well. 
I guess we get to uh, crack it open and, and look at the insides of it in part two. So anyways, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, Cute Comp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.